Hi. Um, I just want to say I was one of the people at, at home Friday night watching Dollhouse, and thank you for the entertainment, Ben. Um, and my question is for Tomo. I read in an interview that you said um, the role of Ballard, it was hard for you to find a niche for it, like after coming Hard off, for me to find a... Like how to act in, like how to get into that character after Battlestar. Um, I just wanted to like what finally clicked and how did you get into that character? Um, I can't speak for all actors, but I think with any series, when you're an episodic, as much as you make strong choices, you do a backstory, maybe you, you have the luxury of sitting down with the show's creators and the writers and really finding out who the character is, you're still, there's still gonna be a, a journey where you truly discover them and drop in. And I think if you really observe even really good actors' performances in excellent TV shows, you watch them, the progression of it from the pilot and throughout the show, I, I mean, I, I, I tend to see it, and it's been my own experience. Like, for instance, when I did Hilo and Battlestar Galactica, I had a really good sense of it. Thank you, thank you. I had a really good sense of it in the, in the miniseries. But, you know, even more so, once the writing started getting better in first season, they actually started writing for me. It wasn't so much a C storyline, and then I, I just truly understood it, and it was kind of instinctual. Ballard, it was a little confusing at first. It was difficult because I wasn't sure the direction they were taking me in. And I think, to be honest with you, I think the writers were a little confused too at first because, as most of you know, we shot this amazing pilot and then they cannibalized that pilot and spread it out over f the first four episodes, which was really hard for all of us because originally, in the original pilot, her, her and I, care, our characters meet right away. And then something we're not meeting, and I'm trying to decide, have I met this person, or I haven't met this person, have I done this, what point am I at in my career? It was just, it was a little confusing trying to, uh, you know, keep a timetable of exactly what has happened and what's transpired. I personally found it very difficult in the first, you know, first three, four episodes. Um, I just didn't feel that I was clicking with it. And I wasn't sure if the choices I was making were... Um, the right ones, where I was heading in the right direction, because unfortunately, Joss and most of the producers, the writers on the show, were so stressed out about whether we were even gonna make it, because it wasn't looking good. When you have a pilot and then it gets cannibalized and spread out over four episodes, that's not a good thing. You're not starting out right. So there was, there was definitely a, a stress on set, as far as I was concerned, that I felt was coming down from the top, top of the ladder all the way down. So there was no John time. Was like a crackhead by the end of the shoot. He, a sweet crackhead. Yeah. But. Honestly, he really did. I mean, you know, I, I looked at Joss. I didn't know him really well. Not like Eliza, but I could tell. You know, he had a lot on his mind. And I think because he was like, you know, he he had like he has this brilliant mind. He had thought out this bible exactly the direction the show was going to go. I'm sure the episode order, how each of the episodes was going to be done. And unfortunately, it was being taken in a different way right away. There was too many cooks in the kitchen. And that's gonna be hard for a man like that because you can't mess with his, his style of writing. It doesn't work. And uh, there was that stress on set. So for a while there, I, was, I, I just wasn't having my little ego, my actor ego strokes and being told you're doing a very good job, <laughs> which I need to hear. So a lot of the time I was like, I'm not sure if I'm doing a terrible job. Maybe, oh my God, are they gonna fire me? Like, am I doing the right thing? And it was harder too because I literally, the transition from Battlestar was immediate. They released me from Battlestar shooting the very last season to do the Dollhouse pilot, and then I went straight into it. So I went from this environment of working six years with all these directors and these actors, and we were this big, happy family, and there was a whole lot of ego stroking going on all the time. You do a scene, and the director would be like, that's amazing, that was so good. Cool. <laughs> yeah, like, thank you, thank you, Michael. I'm like, do you mind if I go again? I just wanna try something. He'd be like, let's do it, let's play. And that was it, you know what I mean? So I came, I left that, and then went into, we'd finish the scene, Josh would be like, moving on, and I'm like, <laughs> Yeah. Do you like me? Was I good? <laughs> Can you please just Joss. rewind one and say that, that word? Say Joss's favorite word, please, the way only you say it. Which one? It starts with an E. It's supposed to have an X, but you just take a V. So it's they... exactly the way you said it. <laughs> so I tend to say, I, at least I used to, and because of Eliza and Joss busting my balls about it, there was I'd a say sign on the exactly. walls in the writers' room that said, "Do not write word, the word exactly for Tavo." Yeah, because I'll because I'll drop the X. That's true. You'd be like exactly. exactly.
Exactly. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. Moving on. Did that answer your question? <laughs> Exactly. I've been working on it. I've been working on it. Hi. Um, you guys have obviously inspired a lot of passion and a lot of people here as evidenced by this full ballroom and we've waited an hour plus to see you. And I'm Thank curious, you. who here are you excited to meet and what kind of panel would you wait in line for? So my signing table is right across some people from Fringe. Uh, Astrid, the one guy, huh? <laughs> I don't know, I'm horrible with names, but I'm just, and then Michael Cervez of this. I was also a big Broadway performer, I'm sure as most of you know, he's like crazy talented. Um, so if no one's at my table for a minute, I just kind of look back and awkwardly stare. <laughs> And then I think about getting the nerve to go over, and I don't. And then yesterday I was saying hi to this guy because he just got here, and then I was walking around, and the guy that plays Monroe on Grimm, which I am like secretly obsessed with, by the way. It's horrible and awesome at the same exact time, and I can't get enough. I'd wait in line for that panel if they were all there for sure. So I went and I introduced myself, and he's like, hey, it's just not worth it. I, make, I, get, I just panic. I panic a lot. So I don't know. I just, I kind of creep. I creep on people. That's what I do. Well, let's be honest, there's a whole level of creepiness that goes on at Dragon Con. <laughs> it's a, hey, it's okay, we're all allowed to creep. Everyone's creeping here. This, this, it's all about the people watching and then and, and creeping. I mean, as actors, we do it. I tend to do it too. But, yeah. You've creeped by my table at least five times. I've creeped by the table. <laughs> times, so I can't help it. You know what, I, I, I'm gonna admit that I haven't had an opportunity to sort of walk the, the, the what's it called, the walk of fame? Yeah. Walk of fame. Yeah, to see everyone who's there, but I noticed some of the True Blood people beside me, and I, I would love to meet them. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna make a point of it, after this. <laughs> I'll get back to you. So, I fangirled down on Herschel this morning. <laughs> Walking Dead. I, we love that show, man. And it, I had a moment. Is he here? He's, oh, he's here. <laughs> he walked by yesterday to say hi to Ed Asner, who's sitting next to me. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, I like, I just, I was lost. I just, I hallucinated and I forgot my name. And I just was like, <laughs> just, 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 didn't even buy in this day. <laughs> he came and I had like slept eight hours and I was like, okay, I can do this. You can do this, girl. And so I was like, Herschel, we love you! <laughs> he looked a little frightened. Um, and then I was like, oh yeah, and we started talking, and then he's like, I'm a fan of yours too! And it was really sweet. So, I like that. Walking Dead. I love when you guys turned out to be one of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's no mystery. <laughs> I, met, I met Martin McDonough once. And I was terrified, the exact same thing. I went up and I was like, hey, this is it. <laughs> I love you. And then I was just so exactly. And he was exactly. literally just looking at me like, who, who is this clown? Who is this clown? And I walked away with my head down. <laughs> and I told, oh, poor Tom. Well, I guess it was the first, I mean, yeah, people would call me Faith a lot, you know, yell it out in the streets. And I, I guess I just did that. I was like, Herschel! <laughs> You can't control it. We know better. Yeah. Can I tell a quick, really, I'll be fast about it story about me freaking out probably the most ever at somebody? Do you guys know who the monkeys are? Yes. So I, um, I grew up watching the reruns as a kid, but not knowing that they were reruns. I didn't. And then I swear to God, I was gonna marry Davy Jones. Like hands down. Like forget it. That little guy was mine. And. Um, and, and then and then I we, we met him at an autograph signing, whatever, whatever, and my parents bought us his autobiography, and I could read. I was like seven or eight or something, but I didn't care because there were pictures in the book, and so I, I just got right to them. And he looked a little older, which was weird, <laughs> and because now it's the 80s. And, um, 
and I saw a picture of his wife and his daughter and like some pets because I think he owned a farm and I realized that he was married with children right. and I kicked my sister out of our room and I slammed the door and I said, you guys leave me alone. <laughs> and I sobbed and I said to myself out loud, a seven year old miracle, he didn't wait for me. <laughs> So I totally win. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you are just the most priceless human beings. <laughs> Hello, this is for Tama. And my question is, where were you when Paul was in the coma? Because I watched Dollhouse first before I watched Battlestar. So I knew you as Paul before Hilo. So were you filming, I'm going to have my timing off, were you filming Battlestar when Paul was in the coma? No, no, it was just the pilot that, that uh, Battlestar released me for. We were almost done Battlestar. We were on the last couple episodes, and uh, they released me to shoot the original pilot of Dollhouse. So where was I when I was in a coma? Yes. Well, there was a couple scenes there. I took a nice little nap. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and like all I'm the wires behind. are Like, I didn't get into Battlestar before, you know. After what did you say? I didn't find Battlestar until after Dollhouse. Thing I remember you telling me that. This woman, <laughs> this this woman's a, a, a training machine. Can you show everyone your guns, please, real quick? Oh god. No, seriously, she got gun show. amazing guns. Gun show. Just, Go! Woo! <laughs> She's mortified. <laughs> I thought you meant actual guns, and then I got it. <laughs> Those aren't allowed. Those aren't allowed. That's not a good idea. <laughs> Um, I have a question about uh, your inspiration to, um, the, uh, oh. <laughs> um, deep breath, deep breath. Yes. <laughs> I cried in front of you yesterday, I don't remember. Oh, I don't remember that. Taylor? Yes. <laughs> Okay. All right, everybody be quiet. Um, obviously, Rossum is like the tangible enemy throughout the show, but what sort of internal demons did you imagine your characters battled with in order to keep pursuing the betterment of mankind? Ma'am. Wait, ask her. I'll get back to you I feel in a like couple I missed, I hate to make you do this again, Taylor. I feel like I missed the first, first part. Will you just, the question. Oh, just what sort of internal demons did you imagine your character battling with throughout the show? Oh, all of us, right, because there was a lot going on, huh? <laughs> Eliza, go. Eliza, <laughs> like, take this one? <laughs> Deep, man, I'm in it. I'm like, I mean, there were a lot of demons. There were a lot of demons, I think, especially as, um, as Echo started to really have, feel Caroline and, and, you know, have that distinction. Um, I think, I mean, that was the biggest premise of the show, was we're making a show about human trafficking and, and trying to see if there is any Friday night so bad. That. And I think that's why we ended up on Friday nights at 9, <laughs> when Fox realized that that's what the show was about. They were like, we can't put you on after 24 on Tuesdays. Um, but it was, I mean... I, I could. I wish Joss was here, and he could probably give a, a, an amazing articulation. Well, especially answer, be... because you know when you when you started unraveling so much, you had so. I mean, you were all about demons. You had so many characters in your head. I mean, that must have been insane. I feel like Tomo's character had had that issue the most because he was just conscious of it happening. Like as the dolls, we you know quote unquote volunteered or were brought in for various reasons. I mean, you know. It's... No, 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 Paul. Oh. Paul. Paul was a happy character. He was. <laughs> He's happy with life. <laughs> life was good. He always had a smile on his face. I'm not sure if I smiled. There's a couple times I smiled. In the 26 episodes, maybe yeah. twice, two or three times. You smiled when I brought you manicotti. Yes, I did. <laughs> I think Paul definitely had some demons. You know, interesting. You made me think of. Um, I think if the show had gone in the original direction that Joss had sort of planned with the original pilot, there was gonna be some mention of me having been recently divorced. And uh, you know, that was kind of a choice I made because that was one of the few things that Joss gave me in the beginning too. 
I mean, it was really Ballard's, Ballard's sort of obsession with the dollhouse and, and, and Caroline and her character was, you know, it was borderline, it was obsessive. It was, it was, it was, it was almost weird at times. And, and uh, it would have been interesting to see that explored a little bit more. Again, there, there's so much that could have been done with this show and they, the writers were brilliant and they, they, they didn't have the time to wrap things up. And it would have been interesting to see it go in different directions. Um, you know, I would have liked to have worked with some of the other cast a little bit more. Like, I loved when I finally got to work with Harry. We had some incredible actors on the show, obviously. Yeah. Like, yeah. We were cut short. We were cut short. Mm -hmm. But I'm grateful that we did it, you know? Yeah. Um, for me, and I, I talked about this briefly yesterday, but I, I feel like, you know, when I got to be Madeline for a little bit in the second season, and, and, you got, and then we hinted at it in the first season, like why I, my character volunteered to be a doll in the first place. And, and then when I got to play her for a little bit, it was, it was, it was difficult because I had been Melly for so long and I think we were all attached to her and, and um, she wasn't quite, thanks. <laughs> um, Madeline wasn't quite happy obviously in, in her life and I think that's why the last line that I say before I shoot myself in the head <laughs> um, is that it's still Melly fighting through, and, and she says, you made me feel like a real person, and I think that was so, such an interesting choice because, you know, all, all we want as people is to feel loved and respected and like people get us, and I feel like even Madeline was most happy as Melly, if that makes any sense. That's my existential thought for the day, but I think, yeah, I think you know, he loved playing with that kind of stuff. Joss was just brilliant that way, and yeah, he, did. he was... just, he made everybody complicated. He's really, really good at, because humans are. Yeah, like a, like a, yeah. I mean, Paul had this true love with, you know, for, 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 for Melly and, and, and that, how difficult that was for him to, like when he realized that you were a doll and having that conversation when you were Madeline, I mean, you could see it. It's, he had to let go of something in himself that he wasn't gonna get back. And then, you know, when we did the, the jumps with it, the epitaphs too, it was really interesting. I mean, that one scene that we have, you know, it's 10 years later, I mean, I'm, my character's still madly in love with this woman. He's still chasing her, but she's never quite let him in, yeah. you know? But he's not giving up. But she's, she's giving him so much, she's reciprocating so much, enough that he's there, and they're still, you know, trying to save humanity or what have you, but he's... There was that one great scene they wrote where we have the speech, and I'm just like, you won't, you just won't let me in. Yeah. yeah. It was a really good scene, I like that scene. I kind of summed like, up our Tom relationship. Tom was like going there. You're like, yeah. like it's okay, buddy. It's okay. Can, uh, uh, Eliza, can we do that scene again? <laughs> I've, been, I've been meaning to tell you, I've actually got the lines right here. So let's do this right now. I'd like to do that scene again because I wasn't happy with let the take that, we, it's okay that they used. <laughs> the wall is real. real. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody make me a shirt, please. <laughs> Somebody remind Joss. You talk to Joss. He doesn't talk to me anymore. Tell Joss I that like I would Dragon like. Con next I, will, year. I want my wall house shirt. And he promised me. <laughs>